Hey my people from Iran and from all around the world, we went for the video Persia before Khomeini, like before the Islamic revolution and um, I saw a lot of good feedback on that, a lot of people liked that video so I thought we go going more on the Iranian Shah, so we're going on this video Iran under the last Shah 1941 to 1971 Iran history, you're gonna see the reaction to this video after the intro. Du bist ein krasser Versager. Du hast doch nichts gelernt. Ich höre sie reden von Sasta und Talan. Sie sind das Gift, das man erbt. Das Gift eben jener, die ihren Körper schinden und quälen, bis es nicht mehr geht. Oder das Gift der Eltern an ihr Kind, damit es sich erlebt. So we dive in a little bit deeper into Iranian history right here, hopefully. Uh, we found out a lot of things about the Shah, um, what he did and how he was overthrown by... Um, Khomeini, the leader of the Islamic Republic, um, in 1979, and this is we today we're gonna take a look at the time before that and what the Shah actually did. I don't know the video yet; I haven't seen it, but hopefully we're gonna get some more information, and it will be exciting to see more of the history of Iran. Let's see. Iran's modern history has been turbulent, to say the least. Turbulent. The modern history, yes. Having been traumatized by its exposure to European imperialism, the country's leaders were gripped by the desire to become more powerful. Um, yeah, there was about like the Second World War where there was um, uh, UK and Russia invaded uh, Iran. And uh, after that, they wanted the, the oil for themselves and the Iran didn't have like much of their own resources, right? In their estimation, if they industrialized and modernized, they would have a greater chance of being able to defend themselves against foreign aggression. Yeah, they're, they're always in a hot spot. Iran always in a hot spot. Like between diff diff uh, different powers, right? The reign of the last Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah, brings this issue to light. Using the increased revenue of the country's oil sales, the Shah was able to launch a modernization program that saw Iran make rapid material progress. So the revenue was hired uh, from the oil sales. Um, don't know the context really because he didn't say like a timestamp right here when when uh, they made more more money from the oil, but um, at least it seemed like some progress for Iran. At the same time, however. The dictatorial manner he adopted alienated many within Iranian society. Now we're going into the intro. The dictatorial, he said like, uh, there, there's always uh, about like Muslim um, uh, protests in Iran, I guess that's what it was about. like. Um, dictatorial I, I always don't like to say muslim because i don't think this dictatorial dictatorial regime is really referred to islam it's just the sign of them like they represent the islam but not in a good way you know scarred from being caught up in the 19th century great game rivalry between russia and britain yeah we had russia and britain that was the uh in the second world war they invaded uh iran iran sought help from powers such as italy and germany to aid its modernization in the interwar period oh i didn't know germany and italy like the main dictatorships back in the days uh assisted iran back then that is interesting to know because um that would explain a little bit why why Iranian people like Germans. I mean, this is something that I really noticed. Like, I always saw comments and messages saying, like, we love Germany. We love, like, you know, this. there's something going on. This became a huge issue once World War II began. Because even though Reza Shah proclaimed his country's neutrality, British ownership of Iran's oil industry through the Anglo-Iranian oil company meant that it would not take kindly to the presence of German engineers and technicians remaining inside of Iran during the war. Uh, okay, that is interesting. So they had assistance from Germany before the invasion. All right. When the Shah refused to kick the Germans out, 
Britain, along with the Soviet Union, invaded the country in 1941 mm -hmm. and forced the Shah to abdicate. His young son, Mohammad Reza Shah, was installed in his place. There was 1941 that Mohammad Reza Shah began his period like in uh, the Iranian regime, like he was the monarch, the king, somehow. Iran then served as a vital conduit through which the Allies could send supplies to the USSR, referred to as the Persian Corridor. The capital Tehran even served as the location of a key meeting of the Allied leadership in 1943. 1943 there was a key leadership of the leaders you see stalin right here you see from uh churchill and who was the president from the u.s back then i just wonder hmm. once the war was over the allied promise to withdraw from iran was not upheld by the soviets who even went on to establish two puppet states in the northwest of the country one of the earliest confrontations of the Cold War, the Iran crisis of 1946, was soon resolved and Soviet troops withdrew. Um, there was a crisis and... There was a crisis in 1946. Soviet soldiers withdrew. They left the country. All right. That was after the Second World War. ...and Soviet troops withdrew. The dominant issue affecting Iranian politics in the immediate post-war period was oil. Iranians felt disgruntled by the prospect of their most valuable resource being almost entirely in the hands of a foreign government. In 1951, Iran's parliament, the Majlis, named the patriotic Mohammad Mossadegh as the new prime minister. The new prime minister, 1951, only two years, Mohammad Mossadegh. Immediately, the experienced politician nationalized the oil industry and set up the National Iranian Oil Company. Whilst this move won him the adoration of his people, Britain's antagonistic response to losing a key strategic asset led to the Abadan crisis, in which economic sanctions were imposed on Iran and the major refineries at Abadan were blockaded by British warships. Uh, I didn't really understand why uh, which key the British lost in here? He said it, but I didn't really understand. Like some of the other Azerbaijan. Um, anyways, uh, they blocked the the oil industry of Iran because they wanted, like, they tried to get their own value from it. Uh, in that time, nineteen fifty one. And British tried to block their uh, sovereignty, right? in which economic sanctions were imposed on Iran and the major refineries yeah, sanctions were set on Iran. Abadan were blockaded by British warships. During this time, there was even a power struggle of sorts between the Shah and Mossadegh. Oh, okay, there was a... They, they shifted power, like the Prime Minister and the Shah. They were fighting for the power. The latter resigning in 1952 but being reinstated just days later on the back of a popular uprising at his resignation. The very next year, however, Mossadegh's government fell to a coup d'etat engineered by the CIA and MI6. Oh, this is interesting. So, uh, this was why the Prime Minister was in his place only for two years, basically. And um, there was a coup d'etat initiated from the CIA because this man wanted the oil to be for his country and that's why the CIA oh man the power is just a hey man this is this doesn't seem fair to me man the coup put the Shah back in firm control of the country who in turn ratified the consortium agreement of 1954 which split the oil revenue 50 50 between the Iranian government and a consortium of Western companies so 50 50 between western companies and the iran 50 50 doesn't seem like a good deal to me you know maybe better than before i don't know but that was the first contract for the next 25 years the shah ruled in an increasingly autocratic style 
The increased revenue from oil production enabled him to embark upon an ambitious program of socio-economic reform. In 1963, he announced his White Revolution. Aimed at expediting the modernization of his country, it focused on a wide range of issues. So he tried to modernize the country. This is the I think this is really important to know that they that he tried to to uh, make more options for the Iranian citizens, right? And try to modernize the country, including land reforms, land the reform. right to vote for women, and industrial development projects. The right to vote for women. That was just in what did he say? Nineteen sixty four. That was early. That was early. That's a good thing, man. Hoping to appeal to the peasantry, in the long run, the Shah's white revolution helped to sow the seeds of his own downfall as it alienated the landed elites and the ulama. The landed elites, okay. So basically, he tried to um, give the poor people more land so they can live on their own but the elites were not happy with that like in his own country so this is why his downfall was prognosticated somehow demonstrations in 1963 helped transform Ruhla Khomeini into a major political and religious leader after he criticized the reforms on the grounds that they were an attack on Islam and accused the Shah of submitting to America and Israel Oh, okay. So Khomeini initialized the protests because he said um, the Shah would work against their own people and for America. And he said it's an attack on, on the Islam. Like, I don't see where this makes sense. I don't know. People back then were... I don't know why they were not, not happy with the situation. Like, the, the majority of the people should have been happy, right? The westernizing trend, favored by the Shah, put him at odds with the conservative elements of his society. At the same time, his regime was constantly accused of corruption. Whilst the National Intelligence Agency, SAVAK, aggressively cracked down on political dissent. All Wait, like the Shah's uh, police and soldiers went aggressively against the protesters? I mean, this is this is not a good sign, of course. If you go on like that against your own citizens, that doesn't make you more trustworthy, right? Constantly accused of corruption. They were accused of corruption. Whilst the National Intelligence Agency, SAVAK, aggressively cracked down on political dissent. All this formulated an atmosphere in which huge chunks of Iranian society felt discontent with the Pahlavi regime. Look, they were, they were unhappy with the Shah despite he was doing, like, d he achieved a lot for the people, right? By 1978, this culminated in a popular revolution spearheaded by none other than Ayatollah Khomeini. Feeling his position was untenable, the Shah went into exile in 1979 and the monarchy was abolished. Like, this was the moment where Khomeini gained power and the Shah went into exile because he thought he's not he's untouchable anymore because the people are on his side. Later that same year, an Islamic Republic was announced with Khomeini leading it. The Islamic Revolution sent shockwaves throughout the world. Anti-American sentiment had been integral to the Islamist cause against the Shah and so the new Islamic Republic's relations with the US proved to be contentious. So, yeah, they were anti-American, basically. That was, that was one of the main purposes that I said, like, America is the evil in this. Late in 1979, an Islamist student group took over the American embassy in Tehran and held the diplomats within hostage. The ins like, in the diplomacy of America, the like, the diplomats were taken hostages by Muslim students? Did I understand that right? ...and held the diplomats... Late in 1979, an Islamist student group took over the... Yeah, a student group. ...American embassy in Tehran and held the diplomats within hostage. 
The ensuing diplomatic crisis resulted in the severance of relations between Iran and the US, which is still the case to this day. This is why there are a lot of sanctions from America, from the US to Iran, like because of what happened back then and the regime so anti-American. This is why they gained so many sanctions. Thank you guys for watching. That's so unfortunate, man. I want to thank my patrons for always supporting. If you want to financially support Hikma History, there's a link to my Patreon in the description to this video. Little Patreon advertisement. Don't forget right to check out my second channel on street food if you want to see delicious food being prepared. Until next time. Uh, I have to say the food looks really delicious. I I have to say, it, man. Hey, boy. Hey, no doubt about it, man. Um, but this just by the way, hey, I like the video. I think it was very informative and uh, easier to understand than the last one we had uh, from a documentary. Um, the comments said this, uh, the information are quite accurate. So I hope um, they actually are and I'm not gaining wrong information right here. Let's leave a like real quick. And if you want to see more reactions like this, please sub to the channel and hit the bell. And don't forget to hit me up on my socials, Instagram and Facebook to write me messages and to follow my other content. Thank you very much. And um, most times I'm doing music reactions, so I'm a rapper myself. If you want to check out some of my music, watch this music video right here. It's provided with English subtitles so you can understand the lyrics. And right above you can find my reaction on Persia before Khomeini. That went on last week. Maybe you're interested to see it. I wish you the very best. Stay healthy, stay well, and farewell.